Hello everyone, it's Kathy here and today I'd like to share with you a technique, a watercolouring background technique that I was inspired by from Jennifer McGuire. And it's a really easy technique which uses really simple materials and the effects are really, really dramatic. And we're going to create a silhouette. So you'll need some watercolour paints, cling wrap, and also some watercolour paper and this dye. I'm using Tim Holtz Cityscape Silhouette dye and also this watercolour paper which is quite inexpensive. I used a sheet and then I've trimmed this down to four inches by six inches for this project. Just going to move things to one side and we'll get started. So to begin with, we're going to use one sheet of watercolour paper and the watercolour paints. I've also got to one side a cup of clean water. I'm not actually going to use the brush supplied. I'm going to use a wider brush. I'm just lightly misting the paint just to get the colours activated and it helps to apply the watercolours onto the paper. So I've lightly misted the, the paints and now we can get started. So for this technique to really really work you need to have a lot of water. So I've put quite a lot of water on my brush and now I'm just loosely applying and I'm just getting colour onto the paper and I'm not making any effort whatsoever to keep it neat. I'm just applying colour. I'm creating a night ground background for my first piece. So I'm using some blues. And I want to create an ombre look. And an ombre look starts off dark and then it becomes lighter. So for this layer, I'm lightly overlapping my layers each time I apply a new colour. So you can see that each time I go to put my paint down I go lightly over the first colour just so it overlaps and there isn't a harsh line and you can see that my lines aren't straight. I don't have a lighter blue so I'm going to create my own and I'm going to use the paint tray to do so. So I'm just adding some of the light blue with water and applying the white to create my own third colour, my own third blue and then I'll repeat that process. I'll go over the previous colour and I'll apply that light blue to the top part of my watercolour paper. So the first layer is finished and so it's time to go back to add even more and you can see that there's quite a bit of water on the paper and for this technique to work you need lots of water. I'm also making sure that I'm trying to get the colours to be really bright and to make sure that I go to the edges because I don't want to have any white watercolour paper showing. So each time I go back and check to see that there's no white and to make sure that I've gone right to the edge. This is my second blue so I'm going over that first blue and also checking to see that there's no white. I'm mixing up some more light blue just so that I can go over to create that third blue to complete that ombre look. So once again adding more water to create the third layer and to apply that light blue paint. So there's quite a lot of water on there and that will help when we apply the cling wrap. So I'm just getting some cling wrap from the roll and I'm just going to place it on top of the watercolour and I'm scrunching it up. The more scrunches you make and you can see how the watercolour is moving and this is what we want. We want it to move and I'm pressing it down so that it creases. And when it dries, this is what the effect will be that you see in the finished product. So I'm just carefully manipulating it because I don't want the colours to, to lift off the paper 
and tapping it down. I'm carefully lifting it off my craft mat and just placing it on this drying board, ready to start the second piece. Just clean off my craft mat and we'll start on our second piece and this is going to be like a sunset. So for these colours I'm going to be using warm colours and for the sunset I'm going to start with a nice red. So once again wetting my paintbrush to apply my first colour and I'm just applying the red just to get my first layer down and I'm not paying any attention, the lines aren't smooth, I don't want anything smooth, I just want to lay my colour down and I'm trying to get my colour to go to the edge. My second colour is orange, so I'm doing the same thing, overlapping over the red so that we don't have any harsh lines, going back just so that I can apply more colour and more water. And then finally my third colour is the yellow, again overlapping over onto the orange, applying water so that there's a lot of water on that paper and going to the edges again. I'm going to do my second layer now to make sure that I have a lot of water and just to make sure that my colours are nice and bright. So I'm going back, going back up to the edges as well making sure that I don't have any white and trying to get as much color down so that the colors are really really bright and strong. Applying my orange making sure that it overlaps with the red so that we don't have any straight harsh lines and again I'm just doing random strokes there is no straight lines here whatsoever and I'm trying to make sure that the paper stays nice and wet Finally, my third layer, which is the yellow, and I'm repeating the same process as before. Now it's time to add that cling wrap. I'm going to apply it, but this time I want to try a different technique, and this is what Jennifer McGuire did. She placed hers in straight lines, so I'm going to try and replicate that on this. So when I place the cling wrap down, I'm going to try and form straight lines as I position the cling wrap onto the watercolour paper. Last time I just scrunched it randomly, this time I want to try and get some streaky lines which is a little bit different. So I'm just experimenting just to see how it will look for this sunset just so that it's a little bit different to the nighttime background. So I'm just carefully with my fingers moving the cling wrap and pressing to position it into place so that I can create those straight lines. Once I'm happy with that then I just press it and then the next step is to let it dry. With my experimental pieces I let it dry overnight but I'm going to leave these dry for one hour and then I'll carefully peel off the cling wrap and see what the effects are like. So I'll put this to one side and then I'll be back. So it's been an hour, I've come back and I'm going to carefully peel off just to see how it all looks. So this is the one with the lines. Can't really see much texture so I'll have a look on the other side. There is a little bit. The paper is still a bit wet. So I'll just have a look now to see what the scrunched up blue one looks like. And you can see that with this one, the, the effects are more dramatic. So I'm quite pleased with how that one looks. This one, there is some texture, but it is not as obvious as what the blue one looks like. So if I had to do this again, I would probably go with the scrunched up one because I think the effects are more dra dramatic or perhaps use a better quality watercolor paper. This is the die cut. I've die cut the pieces with the black cardstock and they still look great behind that background and the, the sunset looks really fabulous as well so I'm very pleased with how they look. This was my practice piece that I did last night so this is how the sunset one looks with the scrunched up and I really like that effect and this was my prototype that I played with. I used a green 
and I really liked how that looked so I can still use that for future projects so thanks so much and I hope you'll give it a try